Hi everyone. In this lecture, we are going to add meetings to the home page. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our now. This is the home.html. This is open within the website because the website is the folder or the package that is going to handle the home page. And there I'm going to go to the views.py file and I'm going to do so. I'm going to bring some changes in here. Now, what do we have currently in there? So if I remove everything, now it says there are currently three meetings in the database, but this is not in our final application, right? In our final application, we have a title that says meetings. And then we basically loop through all the meeting elements or objects within the database and we show all of them to the user. So we are going to change this uh, paragraph as well. First things first in here, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to, we are trying to grab all the meetings from the database. Now we have already imported the meeting class and we have uh, counted how many meetings we have, but there is another cool method as well. And if you change this count to all, this is going to return all the meetings from the database. But now this name doesn't make sense. That's why I'm going to remove the num. I'm just going to say meetings, meeting.objects.all. This function is going to re return all the objects from the meeting class. What are all the objects? They are all the records within the meeting table. Very simple. I'm going to save that. And in here, we need to reference that as well. So instead of adding this, I'm going to remove all of it and I'm going to provide an H2 that says meetings. And then I'm going to grab a UL. Now within the UL, because uh, we don't know how many meetings we might have. So sometimes we might have 10 meetings, sometimes 100, sometimes two. So because we don't know how many meetings we are going to end up with, we need to loop through this object, this meetings object or meetings class and as many meetings as there are we are going to grab them dynamically instead of like hard coding them that's why we are going to use a conditional in J in flask we also had conditionals in django no surprise we are we also have conditionals so i'm going to pass and the syntax is identical now this is a loop uh, sorry, I, I keep saying conditionals. This is like a loop. This is not a conditional. I'm sorry for that. This is a loop because we need to loop through all of the data and as many meetings as there are, we're going to extract them. So if there are one, we're going to extract one. If there are 1,000, we're going to extract 1,000. This is a loop. This is not a conditional. I'm going to say for meeting, this, this meeting is the loop agent or the loop variable, right? You remember from our loops chapters, we talked a lot about this in meetings. What is this meetings? It is the template variable. Where is it? It's right here. So I'm going to say for meeting in meetings. So for as many meetings as we have in our database, we are going to repeat this li or this list item. We are going to repeat it for how many times, as many times, as we have as the number of meetings that we have so if we have 10 meetings we are going to repeat this li 10 times why because each li will be referred to one meeting we will referred to one meeting so for 10 meetings it is sensible that we need 10 li's right that's why we are going to repeat these list items for 10 times now in here i'm going to provide an anchored element why an anchor tag? Because when the user clicks on any meeting, the user will be redirected to the page for that specific meeting. Where is the page? The page is in meetings slash slash whatever the meeting ID is. So if the user clicks on the meeting that has a meeting ID of five, the user has to be redirected to that specific meeting. We don't want the user to be redirected to a meeting. For example, the user clicks on the meeting with an ID of 10. We don't want the user to go to a meeting which has an ID of 5, right? Because that, that is not something that the user has clicked. Therefore, we are going to uh, like make this dynamic. Whatever the user clicks on is going to be the meeting that the user is going to be redirected to. What about the title of the meeting? 
Now the title of the meeting again is going to be all the meetings that are extracted from the database. We don't want to hard code anything in here. That's why we are using a lot of template variables in here. So what is the title of the meeting? The title of the meeting is going to be meeting dot title. I'm going to explain this one more time. So this meeting that I have provided in here is this loop variable. So if I have 10 meetings in my database, this loop variable, each time it iterates over that class, it is going to grab one meeting. That meeting is going to have an ID, which we can access through the dot operator, this one. And that meeting is going to have a title, which we, are going, which we can access through the dot operator, dot title. That's actually what it means. Very simple. Now, we need to end this meeting, this loop as well. So I'm going to say person sign and four. Now, uh, a little bit technicality about this loop. This loop is called a template tag. The curly braces and the person signs, they execute the template tags. The HTML element within, the, within this loop will be repeated for every meeting in the meetings in the database. Now, the meetings in the for loop come from the corresponding view function in which we have specified the value for the meetings key inside the dictionary. And what we want is to grab all the meetings from the database and for each meeting, repeat the li or the list item inside the loop so we can generate all the meetings from the database, put them inside the template and display it to the user. Now, so far we are done in here. The only way that we can make sure that all the meetings have been added is just come in here and just refresh the page. And there we go. So all the meetings have been extracted from the database. If I were to add another meeting, I would say um, JavaScript, JavaScript core, I'm not going to say cores, JavaScript uh, promises. I'm just going to say JavaScript promises. It is going to be on some year. I'm just going to set it to 20, 2100. I really like that year. Uh, the time is going to be now, and the meeting room is going to be Galactic Shack. Let's save that. So we have JavaScript promises, right? If I come in here, if I reload the page, what does that mean? It means our template will be reloaded, right? What does that mean? It means this for loop is going to run again. And when it runs again, it checks back the database and it sees, oh, there is another meeting added, so let's grab it and it is going to show it there we go but what does this template what does this anchor tag do what this anchor tag does is it's going to go to that specific meetings id that we click on and it's going to show the details on that so if i just click on it there we go javascript promises this meeting has been scheduled on this date at this time in this room uh, on this room number on this floor so for everyone, we are going to see that. So now you can see how this application is coming together. And we are able to actually go ahead and work with it. Now, uh, I do feel like you might have this question. I feel like you might say, okay, how does actually Django know where is this ID coming from? You can, you can take a look at this. You can see that we have slash meetings slash we have meeting slash have you seen this url before yes you have that is the url within the meeting planner folder this url is dot pi is is that is that url not resembling this url that we have here yes it does does that url resemble the url that we have in here yes it does so when when you're trying when you click on that anchor element what actually happens is a request, a GET request comes to the server. But at this time, the view function that handles that GET request is not going to be the uh, welcome view function. No, 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 no. Which view function it's going to be? What was the URL? So if, you, if you're thinking, okay, how do I know which view function is going to handle which URL? Just make sure to go to the urls.py file. The urls.py file will tell you 
which view function is mapped to which URL. So we have meetings slash some number, some integer, right? What is the view function responsible for this URL? Or what is the view function mapped to this URL? It is the detail view function. That's why when you just refresh the page, this page comes from our home.html. And what, what we are actually doing here is whenever you refresh that page, what do, you, what do we get in the server log? I need to explain this carefully so you really understand and you become a really good developer. So when you refresh the home page or when you go to that home page, it is a GET request to which URL? To a simple slash URL, which is the home page. So what the Django server is going to do is the Django server is going to take a look at the URLs.py file and it is going to try to find this slash. So let's go to the URLs.py file. Where is that slash? The slash is right here. It is implied, it's implicit, not explicit. And then it is going to map it to the view function responsible for it. What is the view function responsible for it? It's the welcome view function. Then it is going to go to that welcome view function. And then the rest is done by the welcome view function. It is going to render this page and is going to pass in for this template variable this value. Right? And now, when you click on any meeting, another request is made to the server, right? Here we go. What is that URL? Uh, what is that request? It's a GET request. Where is the URL? This is the URL. So what the Django server does is it's going to take a look at this URL and it's going to try to find it within the URLs.py. Remember, all the URLs are within this URLs.py, which is within this meeting plan or original app that we have. So which URL resembles this URL? Slash meeting slash some sort of an integer, right? So this URL matches the URL that I've highlighted in the terminal. Then Django is going to map it to its view function. What is the view function? In this case, it's not welcome, it's detail. Then it is going to try to find that detail. Uh, when it finds it, here, is, here it is, the rest is the details job. Detail is going to render, is going to uh, throw an error in case that ID doesn't exist. Where is the ID coming from? The ID is coming from the browser. There we go. So we did not pass in any ID. We just clicked on it and it grabbed the ID for it. Where is this ID actually coming from? It's coming from the database. That is very cool. So here is the ID. ID is one. ID is going to be passed in here integer so it's, we are going to end up with meetings slash something like this one and then this meetings one is going to be passed uh where is it that id one is going to come in here so we are going to check if the primary key with id of one exists or not if it doesn't exist we're going to throw a 404 um, um 404 page or 404 error or exception if it does exist, then we are going to render the template. Uh, in both cases, we are going to render the template. In, in case it doesn't exist, we are going to render a 404 template. In case it does exist, we are going to render a detail.html. And for which we have a template variable meeting, and the value for that is going to be meeting. So this is how this act process actually works. In case you were wondering, okay, how are you accessing in the home page? The detail page. This is how we access it. We use URL mapping. This is the good thing about URL mapping. URL mapping takes out the hard-coded stuff, throws it away, and it provide, provides you with dynamic data. So you don't really have to worry. How many meetings do you have in database? I don't, I don't really care about that. I was about to say something else, but then I filtered. I don't care. Just loop and loop through it and show me all the meetings in there. That's actually how this works. And you might be wondering, okay, why am I explaining all this stuff in detail? Because this is all the fundamentals that you need to understand. It has to become concrete. Otherwise, you will not be able to create real-world applications. What I want you to take away from all these explanations is uh, um, that you, at the end of the day, you have to be able to create something on your own. 
That's it for this lecture. See you in the next one.